Hello everyone and welcome. I created a video discussing whether or not the Tesla Semi makes any sense, and the fundamentals of that video hold up. However, we now have new information, so many of you requested I create an update, hence here we are. So we're going to be looking at six different aspects of the Tesla Semi, starting with battery capacity. Now in direct response to someone estimating the battery size, Elon tweeted the current efficiency is 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. So based on that exchange of tweets, if we have 500 miles at 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, that gives us an available battery capacity of 850 kilowatt hours. I think this is our best guess at what the actual capacity is until we're actually told the real number. You can also look at the delivery event, in which case it took 93% of the battery to travel 500 miles. If you assume that efficiency was 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, then you would get a overall battery size of about 914 kilowatt hours. Uh, I think this is probably our best guess right here at the 850 kilowatt hours simply because of how that exchange took place on Twitter. Uh, but either way, I don't believe it's going to be that 1000 kilowatt hour that was initially uh, predicted. I think it's probably going to be closer to this 850. Now, Tesla released a video showing this 500 mile drive, and this is a pretty telling video because you can go through it and look at what speed the driver is going, and it's less than I would have expected because Tesla said their estimated range of 500 miles is at 60 miles per hour. Well, if you go through this video and you try and pull out all the segments in which you believe the video is showing the driver at 60 miles per hour or greater, it only ends up being about 14 0.2 seconds worth of the video of the total time of that video being 95 seconds if you take out the parts where it stopped or the driver is taking their bathroom break. So if you take 14.2 and you divide it by 95, that means only 15% of the time in the video, based on my estimate, are you actually driving at or above 60 miles per hour. So most of the driving occurs below 60 miles per hour, indicating the overall energy used is less than what would have been used if the truck had been driving 60 miles per hour. Now, many of you asked why I didn't discuss regen braking in the previous video, and two key points. First of all, we're talking about highway driving here. So we're basically staying at a constant speed, so the amount of regen you have is very minimal. Second, and what's pretty fascinating if you look at Tesla's graph of their 500 mile test run, as long as you start and end with a relatively similar elevation, Thanks to regen, you really don't lose much energy from going uphill. You can basically treat it like flat ground as long as you come back down. If you connect a line between the start and finish, you can see that even after going up a significant amount of elevation, the overall energy consumption is basically the same as if you never went uphill at all since the regen puts you back on track once you start going downhill. Regen is a powerful tool, though of course that wouldn't be true if it's a one-way segment that mostly gains an elevation. Now I want to go back to this video where Tesla is driving below 60 miles per hour. So if we go back to our previous video, we calculated the absolute best case, the minimum amount of energy required in order to travel 60 miles per hour with a full load for 500 miles was 800 kilowatt hours. Now if all we simply do is change our speed from 60 miles per hour to 55 miles per hour, well we have significantly less aerodynamic drag, and so that reduces this number from 800 to about 740 kilowatt hours. In other words, we save 60 kilowatt hours just from that small change in speed. So speed makes a huge impact here on our overall efficiency and what the size of this battery might need to be depending on how far it's going. Now, something very fascinating happens if we analyze this situation assuming that the Tesla Semi has an average speed of 52.5 miles per hour, which isn't that hard to conclude may have happened based on looking through the video. So these two numbers right here are best case looking at just aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. They do not include inertia, so truthfully they're kind of unrealistic. If we include inertia into the equation and we use 52.5 miles per hour for our 500 mile 
drive, then we have a minimum energy requirement of 790 kilowatt hours. 790 kilowatt hours happens to be 93% of 850 kilowatt hours. In other words, the exact percentage that the Tesla Semi used in the test that they showed us. Okay, but what if you want to drive at a higher speed? Well, my best estimate for the amount of energy you would need in order to travel at 70 miles per hour for 500 miles is about 1187 kilowatt hours. In other words, if you were to have an 850 kilowatt hour battery pack, this would be good for about 358 miles of range at 70 miles per hour at rated load. Now, since most of the country has trucking speed limits of 70 miles per hour or above, let's say we have 350 miles of real world range. Is that enough? Well, Tesla claims 80% of routes are less than 250 miles. On top of this, the US Department of Energy reports the average Class 8 vehicle's annual mileage is just under 63,000 miles. If you estimate 300 days driving per year, that's an average of about 210 miles per day. In other words, while the truck may not be right for some use cases, there are plenty of applications where it can make sense. Now on the subject of range, there's a quote from Pepsi who the first Tesla semis were delivered to that has been making the rounds. What most people have fixated on is the statement, the semis will haul Frito-Lay food products for around 425 miles, but for heavier loads of sodas, the trucks will initially do shorter trips of around 100 miles. Some have taken this to mean the Tesla Semi can only go 100 miles while loaded with beverages, but neglect to read the very next sentence. PepsiCo will then also use the Semis to haul beverages in the 400 to 500 mile range as well, O'Connell said. So perhaps initially their beverage routes will be 100 miles, but nowhere is it indicated that this distance is limited by the battery capacity. There is one slightly more interesting quote. O'Connell said that a 425 mile trip carrying Frito-Lay products brings the semi's battery down to roughly 20% and recharging it takes around 35 to 45 minutes. So that would indicate a range of about 530 miles total. But again, this really isn't a useful statement because we don't know how fast the truck is driving. If it's driving at 45 miles per hour, it's embarrassing. If it's driving at 80 miles per hour, it's hugely impressive. So don't let folks convince you that the semi is either good or bad based on these statements released by Pepsi. So how much does the battery weigh for the Tesla Semi? Well, based on an EPA submission by Tesla on the 2022 Tesla Model S, the complete battery pack weighs 537 kilograms and has a specific energy of 186 watt hours per kilogram for that entire battery pack. You multiply these together, that gives you a total battery size of 100 kilowatt hours. So if we look at the Tesla Semi and we assume a battery size of 850, 50 kilowatt hours, we divide that by our density here, 0.186 kilowatt hours per kilogram. That gives us a total weight of 4,570 kilograms or about 10,000 pounds. So our battery probably is about 10,000 pounds or less. And I say or less because realistically, as you scale to a larger size, from a percentage standpoint, less of the overall weight has to go to the structure of that battery pack. So how much does the Tesla Semi itself weigh and how much less cargo can it carry due to its weight versus a Class 8 diesel vehicle? So the average Class 8 diesel truck weighs about 17,000 pounds. And in addition to that, you can have about 2,000 pounds of fuel depending on the setup of fuel tanks. So if we look at a Tesla, let's just say we have to start with that same number, 17,000 pounds just for the truck itself. Then we're going to add 10,000 pounds for the battery as we calculated previously, giving you 27,000 pounds for the truck. Now. We're going to subtract from that to figure out what is our deficit, the diesel truck plus its fuel, so minus 19K, giving us a deficit of about 8,000 pounds versus the diesel. Now, electric semis are allowed to carry an additional 2,000 pounds, so we subtract from that 2,000 pounds, and if you're to think about the electric motors and inverters versus the diesel engine, you can probably save another 2,000 pounds there. So our actual load deficit, assuming these numbers are all correct, would be somewhere in the 4,000 to 6,000 pound range. 
So how much cargo can the Tesla Semi actually carry? Well, they released video with a maxed out truck carrying 11 concrete jersey barriers. Okay, well, how much do these barriers weigh? Bear with me as we figure this out. From the Tesla Semi photo on Wikipedia, we can see the tire size on the front tire is 295 over 75 R22.5. From this, we can calculate the tire diameter is about 40 inches. If we take the side image of the Tesla Semi, we can see that we can fit exactly three tires across the length of a single barrier. Three times the tire's 40 inch diameter is 120 inches, or exactly 10 feet, a standard size of jersey barriers. I checked several different companies for the weight of these, and they all listed them as 4,000 pounds. So if we have 11 10-foot jersey barriers each at 4,000 pounds, then the Tesla Semi's cargo capacity is 44,000 pounds. Now I looked at what is the typical maximum load for a combustion class 8 vehicle, and that number ranges from about 40,000 pounds to about 54,000 pounds, depending on the weight of the combustion class 8 truck. So while it's on the lower end of the range, it does appear the Tesla Semi's maximum load does fall within the same range as combustion trucks. Also worth mentioning, one supplier says you get 12 barriers per truckload, so one more than Tesla can carry, a 4,000 pound deficit, which backs up the 4,000 pound deficit that we calculated earlier. Okay, but here's probably the most important part of this video. How much weight are class 8 vehicles actually hauling around on the road? We'll look at three sources ultimately referenced by the U.S. Department of Energy's latest transportation energy data book. The first source from the National Academy of Sciences shows the distribution of Class 8 truck weights on the road taken from 15 states. You can ignore the lighter end as these are likely trucks with either no trailer or empty trailers. The bulk of vehicles actually pulling cargo you can see falls below 72,800 pounds, meaning cargo loads the Tesla Semi could easily carry. About 10% or less of the trucks actually carrying cargo on the road are above a GVW of 77,200 pounds, so hypothetically, the Tesla Semi potentially may not be right for these maxed loads. The second source, within the same National Academy of Sciences paper referenced earlier, shows that 61% of trucks on the road are cubed out, meaning they're not weight limited but maxed out based on the cargo space required for the goods. They reference 30% being weighed out, meaning weight is the limiting factor, with a GVW of 80,000 pounds or above. So again, hypothetically, for 30% of loads, the Tesla Semi may not be the perfect truck for the job. Finally, the third source, the Department of Transportation, reports the average weights from weigh-in-motion stations for tractors with trailers are from 54,145 to 59,091 pounds GVW. They go on to conclude, Sources are consistent in concluding that a relatively modest fraction of trucks on the road are near the maximum GVW. So what's the point of all this? So many folks have concluded the physics of these trucks don't make any sense, because batteries are heavy. And that's such a binary way of looking at this issue. With today's technology, probably 60 to 90% of US load capacities can be handled by the Tesla Semi. Will there be longer routes that the truck doesn't make sense for? Yeah, absolutely. Will there be heavy loads that the truck doesn't make sense for? Yeah, absolutely. But let's not pretend we're going to snap our fingers and suddenly every Class 8 truck on the road is going to be electric. There are plenty of use cases today that make sense, that we have the technology for. The only two real concerns in my opinion are 1. Does it make financial sense? And 2. Do I have the charging infrastructure I need to do it? If you have point-to-point -point warehouse deliveries with charging, yeah, go for it. But one final comment. Yes, the physics appears sound. But while that may be true, that doesn't mean Tesla's marketing is necessarily sound. They stated you could order the Tesla Semi in 2017 and take delivery in 2019. That was not true. So if you order now, you have to park the truck in two years. They stated the Tesla Semi would have four motors. We're guaranteeing it won't break down for a million miles because it has four independent motors. You can lose two of those four motors and the truck will still keep going. It has three motors. They guaranteed you'd have a seven cents per kilowatt hour charging cost. We're guaranteeing a seven cent kilowatt wholesale price. I highly doubt they'll ever offer that. They said the expected base price was $180,000. I also highly doubt you can buy the truck for that. 
There are good reasons to be skeptical of Tesla based on their marketing, though in my opinion, the engineering checks out. So my biggest concern continues to be the price. While Pepsi states the operating costs over time will pay back, it's also been reported that a $15.4 million state grant and $40,000 federal subsidy per vehicle helps offset part of the costs. If this is all a part of the 100 unit order Pepsi placed, that's a subsidy averaging $194,000 per truck, more than Tesla initially said they'd be selling them for. Now, not all of this subsidy is just for the trucks, but for infrastructure as well, such as the charging units. Regardless, there's a very healthy subsidy which is helping to make this decision financially sound. So there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.